I'm here, so welcome to 23, you're joining me for the Royal Hair, Book 3, Chapter 6, The Princess and the Plea. Or Bartholomew's A Flea. A few days after your visit to Castellarium, you, Liam, and your friends step off the train in Fidelia. Madeline greets you in the foyer, and you're surprised to see that she carries a small bundle of balloons. Amanda instantly reaches for them. I'm glad you responded to my invitation. Welcome to Fidelia. Wow. I wasn't expecting such a warm greeting. It's all in honor, Princess Amanda, of course, and to express my support for you. It's busy. Before you talk with my mother, you should know that her mind is made up. She won't tell me why, but she's been in an increasingly in terrible state in the months since my father's arrest. <laughs> she's taken to unearthing old belongings in the attic and forcing me to listen to her wax nostalgic about her so-called golden years. Wax nostalgic? Uh, I'm confused. And she's determined to vote for Bartholomew. Bartholomew must be... Mm. Straight up rhyming her. We know how fond Adelaide is of certain comforts. She probably could be swayed with the right bottle of booze. Or Bartholomew could promise to get Godfrey back. We can only hope his leverage is as simple as buying her her favorite drink. Whatever her motives, she's resolute. Well, then I guess it's a good thing that's not the real reason we came. Maxwell's right. We may be favored for the vote at the moment, but it can't hurt to know more just in case. What we really need is to search the ma manor. If Godfrey knew anything suspicious about Bartholomew, we have to find it. Godfrey and Bartholomew were close, at least when they were younger. I've never seen anything about Bartholomew, but it is possible there's something. The father did keep extensive journals. Regardless of whether Adelaide changes her mind on her vote, we need an excuse to stay and snoop, or to get her talking. I'll do what I can to help. I've already tried to change my mother's mind on the vote, to no avail. But at least I can help you with the, with this investigation of yours. Oh, but... You want to help? We could definitely use your skills. With your skills, not to mention knowledge of the estate, you'll be an asset. Madeleine nods, offering you a small, appreciative smile. Oh, I certainly will be, luckily for you. You know, I've thought for a moment there's no reason to keep bitter feelings we won Liam, so ha ha, I win. <laughs> Listen, this is me after a good night's sleep. Leave me alone. Adel all right, then. Let's go remind Adelaide who's really in charge. Well, this is her estate, so technically she's in charge. You follow Madeline into the ballroom where you find Adelaide seated at one of the many banquet tables, a glass of amber liquid in her hand. Finally, some company! I was tearing my hair out after six months with no visitors but my daughter and the staff. If you're so worried about your popularity, you shouldn't have voted to take Amanda away from me and Liam. And now you're king and queen, Amanda, know why. I really shouldn't say. Bartholomew will be furious if he finds out I'm even talking to you. Besides, I doubt you could best what he's already promised me. Adeline. You wouldn't turn down the chance for a better offer, would you? She takes a sip of her drink, her expression thoughtful. You do have a point. I I doubt you can do uh, make a better offer, but it can't hurt to hear you out. My arrangement Bartholomew is simple. He offered me money. Oh, and here I thought it was more complicated, like getting Godfrey back, but no, this woman's just swayed by money. Mother, you'd sell your loyalty to the highest bidder? Oh, stuff your indignation. 
If every Cordonian with a drop of noble blood refuses to be seen with me, then I'll at least have my comforts. She raises her glass as if in a toast, then brings it to her lips. Money can buy you friends. You know, case in point, my loyal companion, Dom Perignon, has never let me down. Ah, uh, I don't get it. How's Balmont still recovering from her own money problems? Oh, it's not Balmont money. He promised a favor, Duchess Krona, if he becomes regent, reducing our taxes to the crown. I'd gladly accept the same offer from you, but I assume King Liam would never consider it. <clears throat> a bribe? How's Amaranth fallen further than I thought? First Godfrey turned out to be a murderer, and yonder you're taking bribes from a would-be usurper? It's shameful. In that case, I'm sure you can find your way out. Hmm. You, uh... I think the baby's an indicator we should have answered another way, but I digress. You share a hesitant look with your friends as Liam leans close to you. We can't leave until we've searched the manor. We have to find a reason to stay. Wait, what if we can offer you something ba uh, Bartholomew can't? What can you possibly offer? Entertain me. Acceptance. We could get you welcome back to the court with open arms. I doubt even Bartholomew's money could pull that mi on miracle off. We have something he doesn't. A terrifying mixture of determination and righteous fury, especially when you're trying to take our daughter away. Bartholomew's motivated by stealing the crown, but I'm protecting my daughter. You should know how powerful a force that maternal instinct can be. Well, I suppose I have nothing better to do. What did you have in mind? The best way for you to look good is to do something nice for the royal hair. Like hosting a ball for her, something even Cordonia's finest have never seen before. How would the Royal Highness feel about a fairy tale ball? I tried talking Madeline into one for a Sweet Sixteen. And I said no, because that theme is for infants. Are we? Hey, look, she almost said fairy. Well, it sounds like this infant is on board. Now, let us take care of the details, and I promise you, we'll make some of this magic happen. You have a deal. Well, that was easy. A few days filled with party planning later, you and your family enter the decked up ballroom. Your friends dressed in their fairy tale best are already there with Adelaide. Wow, we didn't even get to choose a setting, we just went with it. Okay, and how is this for how is this for infants? Jesus Christ, I'd take this party. You went all out with the decor, I see. It wouldn't be a fairy tale ball if we didn't uh, feel transported to another world. I'd say realm, but you're taking the side of your friends in their elaborate fairy tale costumes. <laughs> okay, I'll accept it. I'll actually accept it. With our track record at balls, wearing chain mail really isn't a bad idea. Pretty. I feel like I'm at one with nature. Maxwell. You look like a servant. Go get me a go get me a glass of Don Perion. Actually you make it a whiskey. I'm glad I went with uh, this instead of the Kraken. Way too many tentacles to deal with. I feel underdressed by the comparison to you three. Well, then it's lucky we came prepared with a little surprise for you. Come on. You know that, and she's got to slip into an outfit herself. You lead the group to the manor's boutique and pull an iridescent ball ground down from the rack and offer it to Adelaide. We thought you could play the role of Amanda's fairy godmother tonight. That's me throwing up at the idea. Oh, God, Jesus. I'm trying really not hard to aim at the wrinkles, but... And her smiling. It just, oh god, no, make it stop. It's magnificent. Oh, make her go away. The other nobles won't be able to dismiss you in that. 
and I should be able to, there to greet them. An ensemble like this demands to be seen. Yes, go away. She hurries out of the room, and you turn back to the others. Well, that went over well. Keeping her distracted should be easy, with how much she's buying into the party. And, uh, for a minute there I thought Maxwell had gray in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I was like, Maxwell's kind of just aged quickly. And while Riley has her attention, maybe she can dazzle the information out of her. In this, Maxwell offers you a purple gown covered in flowers and embroidery, a sheer cape hanging down behind it. I would leave the rest of the fam out and set costumes for everyone. You, Liam, and Amanda slip into the changing room. Yes! Yes! She looks like Peter Pan! Yes! I'm at, well, I'm getting this for just Amanda. I don't give a shit about the rest of everyone. It's adorable. I think fairy tale suits us, wouldn't you say? Can we see Liam in his, like, full getup? Amanda grabs the tule of her skirt, fluffing it up with a gleeful smile. Fairy! We did have a star-crossed lover's phase, and our daughter's a princess. I say our lives are pretty magical, even when we're not decked out in amazing costumes. Everyone have your earpiece. She just completely ignores what Liam just said. Docked and loaded with the sweet, dulican tones of all my friends. An operation once upon a time is a go. Moments later, you enter the lavishly decorated ballroom. Make the right choices throughout the ball to not only find clues, but to help sway Adelaide's support. Even though we've already done that by purchasing this diamond thing, but I digress. Certain choices may even unlock an item that will help in future chapters. Crap, I have to actually try. It's filled with the din of conversation as they kiss chat, order drinks, and commenting on each other's costumes. Olivia, I could have sworn I just saw you outside, small and green, rather lumpy. Calling me a toad, original. It would have been far more accurate costume. Your success confuses me. The leaves are an odd choice for a wicked witch. Ah, one can almost taste the scandal in the air here. I almost didn't come, but I was too curious. The Adelaide greeting her guest, glass of champagne in hand, spotting you as she approaches. Ah, the guest of honor herself. Greetings, Princess Amanda, heir to the fairy throne. Uh, I see you didn't want to be left out of the costume's fun. You look marvelous. <laughs> Our little fairy princess wouldn't have it any other way. Look at the turnout. This room is packed. The people's princess called, and so they answered. It would be perfect beginning if I had a Prince Charming of my own to open the dance floor with. This is where we try and convey, like, someone to actually be with her. Oh god, help me. Surely you could use a charm spell to maybe poverty boo up a dance partner for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Godfrey's in prison right now. Of course, let me break out my wand. Friends break away to get drinks and mingle as you and Liam scan the ballroom. You point to an unfamiliar nobleman in a nearby group. <laughs> yep, yep, this'll work, this'll, this'll work. Know anything about him? He's slower nobility, of this count, I think. Under normal circumstances, he'd be lucky to be seen dancing with the Duchess. But you're saying there's a chance. You and Liam sidle up along the Viscount and his companions. He turns to you and Amanda, tugs on the fur of his cape. Can't you see I'm in the middle of... Oh, 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 your majesties! Can I help you? My lord. Hmm... Duchess Adelaide is into you. 
like into you, into you, if you know what I mean. Ah, unfortunately, I, I think I do. Bright, you should ask her to dance. Who knows what might happen? If all the same to you, I'd rather not get entangled with the wife of a felon. He waves to his entourage, and they depart, leaving you with Liam and Amanda. So much for saving the first dance. It might not be symbolic victory we'd hope for, but we could ask Drake. He'll quickly find Drake and explain. I don't know, you could try the whole... the realm thing, for those of you who... Mm, Think about like you're a knight of the realm, and allies and evil fae who can only be killed with dancing. Well, then you should have asked Maxwell. Uh, not sure picturing that scenario will help, but I'll do it for Amanda. Thank you. I think that was her way of saying thank you. Drake approaches Adelaide and offers his hand. May I have this dance? Hmm. Member of the Inner Circle hardly speaks to your influence over the rest of the court, Queen Riley. Though I admit that I find Drake's husky, rugged appeal rather charming. Very well lead the way. I'm regretting this already. I'm so sorry, Drake. I'm so sorry. They move on to the empty dance floor and begin a slow foxtrot. Well, at least Adelaide looks like she's enjoying herself. There's no reason we shouldn't enjoy this moment, too. Wouldst thou honor me with a dance? Jake Liam's offered hand with a smile, leaving Amanda to care of your friends, and make your way onto the dance floor as the other couples do the same. You're only a few steps into the dance when a familiar burble catches your attention. You turn to see Amanda's teeter forward out of Maxwell's grip and take her first step. Oh, wait. She's walking? She's walking. Someone! Someone! Quick! Take a video! <laughs> <laughs> I just had to add a little embellishment to that. Everyone make their way. Princess coming through. Eekaboo! Yeah, it's Halloween's coming. Keep going, Amanda. Walk to... Uh, you know what? I'm mommy. I'm, I'm self-centered. Shut up. Go on, Amanda. You can do it. Look at her go! She has the spirited gait of a commander charging into battle. Amanda smiles and toddles forward a few more steps, finally reaching your waiting arms. You and Liam sweep her up into a hug as the guests cheer. Someone remind me to next one we ever go to Liam. Shut up, okay? I'm fair. A wank. That's right, you walked all by yourself. You're the most talented baby in the world, huh, Amanda? And you're about to be a whole lot more trouble, aren't you? Tears. As the fervor of the moment dies down, pairs of guests resume dancing. Adelaide appears at your side. I was truly a magical moment to behold. God, her face when she no this mm, worst chapter. Amanda's working overtime, improving your reputation. And then the hair taking her first steps at your party is a pretty big deal. Tonight is clearly a night for making memories, which brings me to the surprise I have waiting for you. You're gonna vote for us instead of Bartholomew? Ah, oh, right, yeah. Adelaide leads your family into the balmy night air where you see Anna De Luca setting up a photo shoot. If it isn't my favorite royal family. What's all this? Anna wants to run a feature on the party. Her culture editor is standing by for an interview with yours truly. On the condition that I get some pictures of our little fairy princess to use. An outfit like that was made to be photographed. And so were those dimples. Oh, uh... An article and trend could get the court to see you in a different light. And you'd get some adorable pictures of your daughter. It's a win-win. You hear a crackle as Smadelaide's voice comes in over your earpiece. 
If my mother is busy being interviewed, I'll have an opening to sneak off to find my father's study without her noticing. Tutorial, this is your chance to collect an exclusive photo of Amanda for your photo wall and to learn more about her Bartholomew's past. Sounds like an opportunity we can't pass up, huh, Amanda? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. I can't wait to see the pictures. You said Amanda on the grass as Adelaide heads off to do her interview with the editor. All right, Amanda. Save fairy dust. Fairy dust? She has the same raw talent as her mother, plus her own cherubic charm. Riley, you must have some wisdom to impart to your daughter after all of your moments in front of the camera. I got some wisdom. Don't be in front of the camera. You are something of an expert at this point. Mm, the key to a good photo is... Mm, attitude. You have to show your personality. A hair flip or smirk to show sass. You have to leave a bold impression. Amanda blows a raspberry and you hear the snap of a camera shutter. Just like you, she doesn't hold back. As Anna continues snapping pictures, a gust of wind suddenly rustles the bushes, sending dozens of fireflies into the air. Fireflies, dozens, mmm, that'll be the day. Amanda, cast a firefly spell. Amanda stares at the glowing creatures, entranced as they flit and swirl through their mesmerizing patterns. <gasps> oh my god, it's adorable. That's the one. I can't believe that just happened. Rush forward, sweeping Amanda in your arms and wrapping her in a hug, thus ruining the moment. <laughs> we may need to, to get used to incredible things happening around her. Just like I did with you. Yes, this is the center of Sprite material. Anna tilts the screen towards you, and you see that she perfectly captured the moment. Oh my gosh. That picture is enough to make me believe in magic. Everything really came together to make it perfect fairy tale moment. Looks like she's surrounded by pixie dust. Wee. Why couldn't they just make that one bigger? We shouldn't selfishly hoard your cuteness any longer. It's just not fair. Walk, or you start to walk back to the manor hand in hand with Liam. And you saw when you see Madeline emerge to the front door, she waves you over. It seems my father did leave something of relevance in my study, or his study, an old journal. I thought this entry in particular might interest you. Take the journal and flip to the marked section. I revealed news of my decision to Bartholomew today. Let me guess, that's going to cost diamonds. Oh, no, no, okay. He did not take it well. I'm returning to England indefinitely. Constantine has gone completely mad since Eleanor's death. He's more unreasonable than ever. More dangerous than ever. It isn't safe in Cordonia. Coward! You can't run away when Cordonia needs you the most. Big things are about to happen here. If you leave, you'll be throwing away the opportunity of a lifetime. A short lifetime. Without the king is acting, what good is power if we're dead? Huh. I keep mentioning that Bartholomew was angry at Godfrey for leaving Cordonia all those years ago, but it sounds like it was about more than just being left behind by a friend. It's not like Bartholomew was up to his own schemes and he wanted Godfrey to get involved. If Godfrey knew more about this, the answers could be somewhere else in this manner. Why don't we go ask Godfrey? I know, I know, he's in the custody of those two idiots, but I digress. <clears throat> if Godfrey knew more about this. Okay, yeah. Let me know if there's anything else I can do. A coffee would be great. Shortly after you return to the ballroom, Drake and Hannah find you and Liam. The night's getting, not getting any younger. If we're gonna do any more snooping, we should do it now. 
Madeleine mentioned her mom had a bunch of old keepsakes in the attic. Do you think you could get in there? Drake and I will be as quiet as ghosts roaming the halls. You just keep Adelaide focused on the party. You nod determinedly and then look at it for Adelaide as they slip out of the ballroom. Riley, I was just about to go find you. Oh, well, then that's a good thing I found you first. What's up? I've decided to really lean into my role as Amanda's fairy godmother for this evening. I want to grant her a wish, something she'll love to impress the court. So I need your advice. Yeah, give her back to her mommy and daddy. That's what Amanda wants. Just then your earpiece crackles and you hear Hannah whisper to you. Allie keeps some strange things up here, but there's a trunk that looks promising. Problem is, getting to it'll make noise in the attic right above the ballroom. We'll need everyone distracted. Tap dancing, then. Let's go. So you're saying you want some kind of spectacle. Exactly. Hmm. Adelaide, you should... Hmm. Read Amanda fairy tale. Yeah, but that means everything's quiet. Wow, everyone with a magic show. Find a way to make it seem like Amanda's really doing some magic. Something big and loud to really capture everyone's attention. Amanda will love it. Yeah. I think I know just the thing. She rushes off to make the arrangements and returns several minutes later, calling the guests to attention. Thank you all for being here on this enchanted evening. As a fairy godmother to our humble guest, it is my humble duty to grant her a wish. Yes, yes. Allow me to present the gift of magic. She produces a narrow box and opens it to reveal an ornament wand. This woman's really gone all out in five minutes or less, hasn't she? Welcome to Harry Potter's! <laughs> it's just... You're a wizard, Amanda. Oh! You carry Amanda closer and she grabs the wand, banishing it with an elated smile. <laughs> As Amanda waves the wand, the lights in the room begin to shimmer and blink. Whoa, do it again, Manda. She waves it again, and the butterflies suspended from the ceiling rise and fall as, as if they're flying. The sound of gentle, tinkling bells comes in over the speakers. Yeah! This is amazing. Are you sure the princess can't do magic? Wanna find out? Hibbity hobbity boo, I'm gonna turn you into a toad. Duchess Adelaide really went all out. You hear a muffled thud from above, but no one else seems to notice. Focused as they are on Adelaide and Amanda. Drake, did you get it? Yeah, the trunk's filled with letters, and some are bar from Bartholomew. Hmm, it sounds like a rift had grown between him and Godfrey after Queen Eleanor's death. Bartholomew was trying to pressure Godfrey into doing something far for, for Constantine's own good, but Godfrey refused. It looks like Godfrey left for England shortly after. If Godfrey, the man who murdered Eleanor, wouldn't go along with Bartholomew's plan, it had to be pretty damning. The guests began breaking into smaller groups as the wish granting concludes, but Hannah's shocked voice rings in your ear. Wait, Riley, I found a box with a picture of young Godfrey and Bartholomew in it. There may be something else here, but I need more time to search it. If people wander off now, we could be spotted sneaking back into the ball. Got it. Time to stall. Adelaide, wait! The princess has another wish for you to grant. <laughs> the ball goers turn back to watch with curiosity. The wish is my command. Princess Amanda wishes for a magic carpet ride. What the princess wants, the princess gets. She clears the dishes off the brocade place mat and waves her fingers over to it dramatically. Abracadabra Alakazam, rise into the air and fly over the land. You set Amanda down on the carpet, motioning for Liam to help you as you pick up the near corners, and together you carry Amanda around the room. First walking, then flying. Next thing, you'll be teleporting. I will teach her the instant transmission. <laughs> yes, Amanda, conquer the skies. I wish I had a party like this as a kid. Alas, time travel is one of three wishes I can't grant. What are the other two? Love and guaranteed availability timeshare. Got it. 
Riley, you're gonna want to see this. Yeah, why don't you bring it to me then? A few minutes later, Drake and Hannah slip into the ballroom. You wave Adelaide over to you as you, your other friends move to meet. Nice work. I don't think anyone noticed you at all. Thanks to your theatrics, you, though using Amanda as a distraction was clever. <laughs> you hear a commotion behind you and turn to see Adelaide making a show or retiring for the evening. I wish I could stay up all night, but performing all this magic really drains me. Good night, my fake court, good night. Already? Though we are only just getting reacquainted. I hope you throw another ball soon, although I don't know how you could top this fairy tale night. You turn back to your friends as the ballroom doors close behind Adelaide. She really milked the spotlight for everything it was worth the name. At least she seems like she enjoyed herself. But we can't count on her seeing the air of her ways. Anna, you found something in the attic? It's a scrap of paper with some kind of encoded message on it. Oh, I wonder if it leads to the original Cordunian articles of unification. I hope not, unless we can use it to prove Bartholomew stole them and have him locked up. I'm sure I can work out a deal with Queen Amalas to get her to decipher the code. With any luck, we can have results by tomorrow. There's more. I also found this. Oh, it's a scandalous picture of Bartholomew and Godfrey in bed together. She opens her hand, revealing an antique-looking key on a long chain. If this was on a box with a picture of Bartholomew, maybe it's tied to him somehow. I'll hold on to it. I truly hope tonight's efforts were helpful. Maybe they'll help my family finally crawl out of the shadows of my father's crimes. Doubtful. We've done everything we can for now, so we might as well enjoy ourselves for the rest of the night. We haven't even had a chance to see the fairy decorations we had put on, up on the grounds. Take a walk with me. I've heard that if you kiss under the lanterns at the stroke of midnight, something magical will happen. Magical in his pants. <laughs> Amanda yawns in your arms, her hand drooping against your shoulder. It... Oh, you two go ahead. We'll keep an eye on Amanda. Thanks. I don't know what we'd do without you guys. Gently transfer a dozing Amanda into Maxwell's arms and take Liam's hand and head into the mild nighttime air. Now it's mild. Weather sure does shift very quickly here in Cordonia. Hmm, meteorologists are non-existent because they can't keep up. After a short walk, <laughs> you arrive at a beautifully decorated forest path, lit with soft light of lanterns dangling from the benches above. Pretty. Oh, Liam, this place is really magical. It feels like stepping into another world, one where I've found a beautiful princess wandering in the woods. He takes your hand and spins you into an embrace. He laughs softly, resting a hand on his chest. She must have been sneaking out to meet her secret lover and the dashing prince from another kingdom. Secret, I see. So this is a forbidden romance. Our kingdoms have forbidden us to be together, but they can't keep us apart for long. He smiles down at you, one hand sliding up to cup your cheek. They should have known I could never resist you. He leans down to meet you in a kiss, sending a rush of warmth through you. Mm, Prince Liam, I've missed you. It's been too long since I held you in my arms, Princess Riley. Do you think we could have these woods all to ourselves? He presses a kiss along the curve of your jaw, his voice a low husky whisper. I certainly hope so. His lips find yours again, and the kiss deeper this time as he pulls you closer against him. It's the kind of kiss that you could easily get lost in. I was hoping to give the princess who stole my heart a night to remember. Now that we get to admire him in his pantaloons. Eh. As he kisses you once more, Liam's hand trails down your side, leaving goosebumps on your skin, even through your clothing. When you part to catch your breath, the lights from the tree overhead cast a warm glow across his face. For a moment, it really does feel like you've stepped into a fantasy. Don't stop now, Prince Charming. I wouldn't dream of it. 
Liam dips you into a longer, more passionate kiss. He nips at your lower lip because you're sighing against him. You relax against Liam's chest and gasps as he lifts you about the waist and spins you to press you against one of the walkway's trees. I appreciate a prince who doesn't skip his royal workouts. Never. They're much too useful for sweeping princesses off their feet. His warm body presses against yours and the length of him presses closer to you. The next kiss leaves you dizzy with longing. Riley, you're the most beautiful woman in all of the kingdoms. Then you must be the most silver-tongued prince. No. Just an honest one. And a man who's missed the woman he loves. He reaches for your fastenings of your clothing. And with your help, they're soon in a tangle beside the tree. Like what you see. He slips a hand up your side, fingers brushing across the teal fabric, teasing you through it. It's practically a work of art, but it pales in comparison to you. While Liam presses another kiss to the curve of your neck, you teasingly slide a hand down his stomach. His breath catches as you reach below his waistband. Riley, you really have missed me. You slide your hand against him and are rewarded with a groan of longing more than I have words for. Then show me. You unbuckle his belt, earning another groan from him as he undoes his shirt and his clothing quickly joins yours. He lays his cape on the path before lowering you onto the plush fabric, his body quickly sinking on the oars. Right here? I need you, Riley, now. The heat in his voice is enough to send a shiver up your spine, and when he lowers his hips to yours, to meet yours, it's almost enough to make you lose control. Show me how desperate you are. I've never wanted you more. He surges against you more powerfully than you've ever felt, drawing a moan from your lips. As you move together, he pulls one of your legs aside, his waist, and the shift of how your bodies meet is nearly enough for you to come undone. You rake your nails across the muscles of his back, marveling at his strength, at the desperation in each passionate movement, until at last another surge of his hips sends you spiraling over the edge. Later, you lie tangled on the cushions of the bench together, Liam's cape draped across you while he holds you in his arms. Has our getaway lived up, uh, or lived up to your expectations, Princess Riley? Well... I got to see him naked, so consider me satisfied. Because we've never seen him naked before. Stop it! Just... <laughs> You feel the rumble in his chest as he chuckles, then leans down to kiss the curve of your nag. And I'm glad to have satisfied you, but I believe I have also promised you some magic. Liam gently untangles himself from you and then gets down on one knee in front of the bench. He plucks a nearby flower and holds it up to you. Oh, it's pretty. What's this? It's called the Blush of Midnight. There's an old folk tale that says any lovers who pluck its petals together will be bound together for life. You waggle your left hand at him, and your wedding ring glinting beneath the hanging lanterns. I'd say we already are. And consider this a reminder of that promise. He rejoins you on the bench, and together you pluck the petals one by one, and let them drift upon the wind. I do feel something... Like an ancient magic has bound us together. Either that or I feel like you're about to kiss me. Brilliant, beautiful, and she can read the future. I must be the luckiest prince in the world. He kisses you and then you rest your head against his chest, drinking in the beauty of the moment. Thank you for tonight, Liam. It was nice to get away and use our imaginations for a while. It really was. You know, if all these fairy tales were real, I think we'd uh, be even more of a power couple. Absolutely. 
Being to see Riley would have dragons to smite her enemies. Power to see through her husband's clothing. A whole wardrobe of magical hats. Dragons. Are some of these enemies named Bartholomew by any chance? I'd like to think that uh, in this fantasy world, Maxwell's dad isn't the absolute worst. So let's just say my dragons would smite anyone who deserved it. I'm proud to have such a fierce but just queen. It would be different ruling a fantasy land. But I like the thought of our daughter growing up riding unicorns and befriending all the magical creatures in our kingdom. It's not like the happiest ever after I can think of it. Me too. He lifts one of your hands to his lips and kisses it. Veronia might be short on literal magic these days, but I promise we'll find our own happy ending, Riley. No matter what. Right now, it feels closer than ever. You linger in Lingham's arms as long as you can, then head back to the manor hand in hand. Next morning, as you and Liam and your friends prepare for the journey home, you run into Adelaide in the manor's foyer. Ah, I'm glad I caught you all. I didn't get a chance to ask if you enjoyed the party. It was the first good night I've had since my husband's arrest. Baka, if anyone knows how to throw an elaborate party, it's us. So, have you made a decision about the vote? Only time will tell if the ball was enough to get the court to take me back. But you've given me a lot to think about, and I won't commit my vote either way for now. We'll take that as a win. Adelaide waves goodbye and sweeps up the stairs just as your phone buzzes. It's a message from Amalus. Decoded your message. It's an address. Dropping it to you now. 1835 Highbury Lane. Click to open Go Maps. I'm clicking as hard as I can. It won't go anywhere. An address to where? Some hunting lodge. It was bought by a shell company a few decades ago, but I traced it to the source. Bartholomew Balmont. I bet I know what that key you find opens. Thanks for the intel. At least I'm always can type. I didn't know my dad had a hunting lodge. Why would he hide something for like this for so long from his family? Uh, if he kept a secret from his own family, it has to be bad. I bet he uses his cabin for secret meeting, secret hunting, secret murder. Secret meetings. It must be where he plans his blackmail. I bet he and Godfrey used a scheme there. Whatever the cause. He tried to keep this place hidden, which means he has something to hide. Oh, Scooby and the gang. <laughs> Deductive reasoning. Holy crap. Agreed. We better pack us some hunting clothes. I need to know the truth about that lodge and my father. What secrets does Balmont Hunting Lodge have in store for you? Find out in the next chapter. Well, hope you all did enjoy the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And the description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content, be greatly appreciated if you do so. And without further ado, I'd like to say the following. Oh, one, sorry about being this late. Um, pretty much I had a very long, excruciating day yesterday where I had no sleep. And, um, yeah, it doesn't do well for me and my health when uh, that happens. So you have to end up kind of like just, just letting, just letting the waves of sleep take you. Um, I did that, had some good rest, got up, and started this ASAP. So with that being said, um, I also want to say the following, and this is a personal message. Thank you all for supporting this channel. It means a lot. Please make sure you are subscribed if you're not already, because again, it means a lot. Um... I want to thank each and every one of you who actually get to the end of my videos and also leave me wonderful messages. Um, and those of you that um, I either make you laugh, I make you smile, um, or yes, even those of you who can sometimes get aggravated at me but continue to come back and watch my content regardless. Um, I just want to say this world is supposed to be about enjoying it. This world is supposed to be about just enjoying and getting out of the mediocrity and everything else and the cycle of insanity is repeating itself until you can't do things like you just you either lose your mind or you give into the cycle or you break the cycle you should be aiming for the following one seek love 
Don't be afraid of it. And two, if you happen to have a child, you should do everything in your power to protect that child. It's that simple. It really is that simple. Because that is our legacy. That is what we leave behind. And we also want to leave, make a difference in this world, but we also want our children to make a difference. And we want the best possible for our kids. And then we want them to go forward, be the best person they are able to. And then if they have kids, we want that to be passed down to them as well. That is literally what a legacy is. If you don't have kids, like myself, try and influence other people. Try and be, you know, pass good messages on and change the for the betterment of humanity. I know I am not always the positive person I can be, but I try. Um, I guess you could just say the reason why I'm negative at times is because I've seen the worst. And I've seen the worst. I've been to the blackness of the pit of humanity. I've seen the worst it possibly can be. And I push for changes against that. And that is my legacy. That is all I have left is doing what I do now and my my activism and things like that. So once again, thank you for watching. Catch you all later. Peace.